ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಟ್ ಚರಿತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿ by the divine grace of sai an attempt has been made to translate the gist of the divine discourse of sri ramanathan brother telecasted in sai tv this is purely done to share the glory of sai and his divine teachings with more insight to the aspirants ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ದೆವೋಟೀಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಿ ಸೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಅನ್ ಎಂಬ್ರಾಯ್ಡರಿ ಜಾಬ್ ಅಟ್ ಬೀಟ್ ಗಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಓನರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಅ ರೆಮ್ಯುನರೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಬಲ್ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯೀಸ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಡ್ ದ ನರೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ನೋಟ್ ಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ whereas what god gives will last until the yuga ends also he says only god can give none can give enough like that of god and the true giver is the lord alone how can one even compare what god gives with what is given by a man asks shri sai maharaj man is finite whereas god is infinite how can the finite be the ornament of the infinite let us now recall a story narrated by sri ramakrishna paramahansa from the life of king akbar during akbar's reign he supported the heads of all religions by distributing wealth and necessary facilities for them to flourish and sustain he followed the principle of din hi ilahi that is the religion of god and this was the evidence for his religious tolerance a sufi saint came to meet akbar and seek some help in general akbar had great reverence towards sufi saints that day when the sufi saint came to meet akbar he was doing his daily prayers while offering prayers to the lord even if great people come to meet them the priority is given to god and only after completing their prayers they will pay their respects to the guests akbar was aware of the arrival of the sufi saint but he was focusing on his prayers and was doing his namaz he addressed a closing prayer to the lord out loud with palms open thus ho oh lord please grant me wealth to distribute it generously to all the great souls and saints that come to meet me the sufi saint who was watching all this got up from his seat and was about to leave the place just then akbar also completed his prayers and got up noticing the saint immediately asked him what happened why are you leaving the sufi saint said i came to seek help from you whereas you seem to be begging from god hence i decided that i better beg from the lord directly who grants everyone's wish instead of availing fortune from you i can get it from the lord listeners might be curious to know who that sufi saint was but none knew 
Sri Sai philosophers think that there are many similarities in the philosophies of Saint Kabir and Shirdi Sai Baba. Akbar's birth is after the life of Saint Kabir and at one instance Sri Sai Maharaj has declared that he was Kabir and in the above story narrated by him he says he was involved in embroidery work which again coincides with Saint Kabir's life who was always involved in weaving and selling the clothes so the above story might have taken place while he was saint kabir to recall when a commission was formed to inquire about the life and other personal details of shri sai baba they questioned him about his age for which shri sai stated that it is 1 lakh years and he has been there for many yugas immediately the commissioner said this is a very important case hence i request you to give appropriate answers otherwise the consequences might be serious shri sai maharaj was offended because all the details provided by him are true and fair his words were never untrue subsequently shri sai baba said I have been there for many yugas so to conclude when shri sai speaks it need not be pertaining to this incarnation alone consequently once shri sai spoke about the birth of akbar shri sai baba's recounting underscores his birth as saint kabir the narration goes thus i was born as a mohammedan and When I grew old I resided with a Brahmin at Python the words python and brahmin indicate shri eknath maharaj this we can be sure because also in another instance shri sai baba mentioned that it is not easy to find a brahmin like eknath maharaj it is believed that Kabir Das lived in the northern parts of India now called as Bihar and Uttar Pradesh and he also accompanied the great devotees of Lord Panduranga such as Eknath Maharaj and few others in spreading the bhakti movement in this context we can assume that Kabir Das also stayed at Python with Eknath Maharaj now Shri Sai Baba continues his assertion While I was old and staying with the Brahmin at Python a Brahmin holding the musical instrument veena approached me and said the celibate by named Mukund is performing severe penance and it's time to get the fruit of his penance so I asked him to stay quiet immediately I went to meet the celibate Mukund to convey this message whereas that mukund upon seeing me realized that i am a mohammedan hence spoke harsh words and said it is sinful to see a mohammedan like you and further warned if you will step inside we will start a fire jump into it and kill ourselves and the sin of killing us will be on you I didn't want to stay there hence quickly conveyed the message that the fruit of his penance will be granted to him soon and walked out of there saying do whatever you want then I met an old couple belonging to the king's family along with their three servants that couple felt very thirsty and were searching for water to quench their thirst then I gave water from a water pot to that lady and blessed her thus you will be granted a son soon go to amarkot and he will become the ruler of that place soon a son was born to that couple and they named him as jalaluddin mohammed devotees please give your complete attention here jalaluddin mohammed is the name of king akbar so shri sai maharaj met humayun and his wife and blessed them with a son that blessed child was akbar 
though this looks like a story it is true and pooja shri narasimha swami ji has highlighted the same in his shri sai sahasra namavali fourth sloka as om shri sai akbar agna abhivanditaaye namaha commentary one who is respectfully greeted by both learned and ignorant people thus shri sai maharaj has blessed the birth of akbar and this must be the reason why akbar exercised intolerance towards all religions he also founded an academy the ibadat khana the house of worship where the representatives of all major faiths could meet and discuss the questions of theology Though Shri Sai Maharaj had not quoted about his boon to Akbar's parents Ramanathan brother recalls this divine sport of Shri Sai as it has connections to the context After revealing few details about his incarnation as Kabir Shri Sai Baba continues to give some assertions which sounds very disheartening He says Sarkar that is the lord says take take but everybody comes to me and says give give nobody attends carefully to the meaning of what i say my sarkar's treasury is overflowing none comes to fetch cart loads away when i say dig no one does so no one wants to make any efforts i tell them dig up this wealth and plunder cart loads of it the blessed son of a true mother should fill his store with this wealth which means though shri sai maharaj is waiting to give loads of spiritual wisdom the devotees are not showing keen interest to collect the wealth of spiritual insight from him whereas the one who is spiritually elevated will avail this great fortune as that of a holy son of a true mother says shri sai maharaj let's ponder deeply on the above narration of shri sai baba why does he say my sarkar's treasury is full and he says take take whereas nobody comes to take it none comes to dig out and take this wealth in cart load devotees we must all regret as this kind of disappointment is expressed by almost all the revered ones because people approach them only to seek worldly pleasures and gifts while the great ones are waiting to bestow them the worldly delights then expect them to return to them to gain spiritual wisdom but only very few go back and progress spiritually to quote vallalar swamigal of vadalur says kadai virithen kolluvar illai katti virithen he elucidated many spiritual philosophies but people were only interested to see his miracles and requested him to exhibit them when shri vallalar swamigal was not inclined to do so they caused distress to him he founded an organization known as satya gnana tirusabai few miscreants wanted to create trouble to him so they spread rumors that he would revive the dead ones and believing this people began to bring the dead bodies of their relatives and bother vallalar swamigal to revive the life of their relatives greatly disappointed with the behavior of people he left his mortal coil saying kadai virithen kolluvar illai katti vitten which means i spread out my shop none came to buy hence i closed it many saints had this great regret because they were so enthusiastic to deliver spiritual riches to everyone without any disparity but they were all so distraught when people went to them to earn only material benefits let me refer the assertion of shri gnananda giri swamigal chettiyar that is the merchant has all sorts of items in his departmental store 
Then he paused and continued. It consists of gold, silver, diamond and precious gems. It also contains salt, tamarind, rice and chilies. Whereas those who came to the shop only purchased salt or tamarind, there is none to buy those diamonds or gems. We can now listen to the declaration made by Sri Pundi Swamigal, who often talks in effusion, was a great Siddha Purush. He once spoke to his devotee Muttu thus, I have set my shop and waiting to sell the products, but only the blind ones visit and leave the shop which means I have loads of spiritual wisdom to impart whereas people are blindfolded with Maya and they only visit to grab materialistic benefits. Also to another local devotee by name Natarajan, in a sarcastic manner Sri Pundi Swami says, the one who is coming is blind and that is present here is a thief. The purpose of this statement is, all those who visit me have no sense of discrimination. Instead of gaining spiritual wealth from me, they are focusing on getting trivial things which is termed as blind. And he calls himself as a thief because when the blind arrives, I am quiet like a thief that is hiding in a house to rob because there is no use in saying anything to these people as they don't listen or understand the import of the subject. This is the plight of all the great ones. They remain silent. It is not an exaggeration if I say that Sri Sai Baba reveals the disposition of all the Satpurushas. Also, these narrations reflect exactly the thoughts inscribed in the Upanishads. Sri Sai Maharaj says, What will be the fate of my living being? Dust will turn to dust and air will merge with air. This time will not come again. Hence, listen to me very attentively. This statement of Sri Sai Baba is exactly coinciding with a sloka in Isha Bhashya Upanishad for which even Sri Dashganu Maharaj wrote the commentary and the Leela related to this has been already narrated in Sri Sai Satcharitra. Let's listen to the sloka verse 17. Vayur Anilam Amritam Atedam Bashmantam Shariram Om Kratosmara Krutam Smara Kratosmara Krutam Smara Commentary Let my prana melt into the all pervading air, the eternal Sutratman, and let this body be burnt by fire to ashes. Om Ho mind, remember, remember my deeds. Oh, mind, remember, remember my deeds. The above verses is considered as the source sloka for Udi because all the five pranas will merge with its source and what will remain is just the ashes. And Sri Hemat Panji with a great humility says that it is Sri Sai Baba who out of mercy has made him to narrate his story and says, he will write about the essence of Udi in the next chapter and concludes this 32nd chapter by paying his reverence to Sadguru Sri Sai Maharaj. We can continue to listen to other incredible Leelas of Sri Sai in the coming episode. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace be to all. Oh. Sai Ram